The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Welcome to Kingdom Connection. I am so thankful that you're watching this today. I want to wish all of you a very happy Easter. I pray you and your family and all that you have has the favor and blessing of God on it because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This message is going to change your life. Listen and let it touch you. Look with me in Matthew chapter 27 for just a few moments this morning. Verse 57 of Matthew chapter 27. And when the evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and he begged for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth, laid it in a new tomb, which he had hewn out of rock and rolled the large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary sitting opposite of the tomb. And when the evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea, who himself was a disciple and had become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you for a few moments today about how to be a hero. Because the man that I just read about in the scripture certainly would fit that description. I love the fact that the Bible points out that this man was a rich man. He was not a preacher. He was not a prophet. He was not a uh, some person who was just in a spiritual office of the church or the temple work. He was a business person. He was a businessman. He was a very successful businessman. And he had become rich according to the scripture. And Jesus didn't turn him away. He was rich and he was a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I want you to notice something else. The timing of his appearance. He came at evening time. He came in the night. He showed up. And he used his prestige, he used his money, he used his influence, he used his fame, he used all that life had afforded him, not for himself, but he went where no one else could go, into see Pilate. The only reason he could get an audience was because of all of the success that he had had in his life. It gave him the power and the authority to go where other people could not go. The followers of Jesus were just common people, fishermen and different people who worked every day, normal jobs. But this man understood, I have been given wealth, I have been given prestige and power, not for my own only, but I have been given this position and opportunity at this strategic moment and he went at nighttime to beg for the body of Christ. That's so important. He came at night. He came late to Jesus. He came when Jesus had nothing to offer him. His body was lifeless. His body was not performing miracles like it used to do. It was not raising the dead and opening the eyes of the blind. It was not attracting Tens of thousands of people coming from everywhere just to hear the words that he would speak. There were no words coming out of the mouth of the body of Jesus. It was scarred. It was marred. It was bloody. It was gory. It was not uh, uh, anything attractive. He was like a lamb that was led before the slaughter. It was, it was ugly. It was not anything that you should be begging to get involved with. But this man was a hero. Because he came in the night. 
He came in the night when, when, the, when the crowds were not around. Where was blind Bartimaeus? He wasn't there. Where was the demoniac that got set free from 5,000 demons? He was not there. Where was Lazarus? He got raised from the dead, but he was not there. Oh, he was there when the crowds were there and the sunshine of miracles. They were all there. But now when Christ, when the body of Christ needed someone's assistance and someone's help, there steps out of the shadows a businessman who said, I can be a hero in the, in the night. I can step up right now and I can use my influence and what God has trusted me with and I can be a hero and I can provide a place for the body of Christ in my city. All of them should have been there at that vulnerable moment after Jesus had been crucified and died and his body was just laying there in a pool of its own blood. But only one man came out of the shadows. He said, I don't have to have a band playing. I don't have to have the spotlight. I don't have to have big crowds noticing me and what I'm doing. I'm coming in the night. I'm not doing it for the applause of man. I'm not doing what I'm doing and, and, and giving what I'm giving. I'm not doing it so people will see, oh, wow, he's really something. I love the fact that he was a hero that came at night under the cover of darkness doing what he did. But had he not done that, I would argue that, that maybe the role of this businessman was more critical because had they not put that body in that tomb, the story would have got all messed up about the resurrection of Jesus. The gospel is no good if you don't have the story of the resurrection. And who did God trust? Who did God lean on to take care of that precious body until it could be moved from a death position to a resurrection position? Oh, a businessman, a man who got up and went to work every day. He didn't get up and go to the temple. He didn't get up and go and, and, and do things in full-time ministry. He was a businessman. He said, I don't need the crowd. God wants to transform us from consumers to contributors, from getting a blessing, getting a blessing to being a blessing, from always receiving when we come to church to giving of ourselves to heal the body of Christ, which is not our buildings, it's our people. He did not come in the morning a blessing or the midday manifestation of miracles. He did not come when Jesus was manifesting supernatural success, but he came when Jesus' body was its most vulnerable and needy. Joseph of Arimathea rendered a simple Service to Jesus Christ rooted in faith, rooted in faithfulness. And during this pandemic, if we have not learned anything, he was the only one there. And if we haven't learned anything, we should have learned that it is our personal relationship outside the crowds with Jesus Christ that is the only thing that will matter. You can't just come to church and always get splash over blessings of somebody else's walk and somebody else's prayer life and somebody else's praise. But the truth is, if the pandemic has taught us anything, it should have taught us that I must have my own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to commend those who have been heroes in the night. They beg to get involved with the body of Christ. We have them in this church. People who, who don't just come when the church can. See, the thing that Joseph of Arimathea was so powerful at, he came in the night. He came when the body of Christ was, was lifeless. The deity had left and there were no miracles and there was no glory there. But he said, I can be a hero. I can get it 
from the death position to the resurrection position. I can help and assist and bless the body of Christ. And even though it looks bad right now, and even though there's not glory and there's not crowds and there's not a lot of excitement, I can, through my faithfulness of what God has blessed me with, I can give and I can support and I can take care of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is what we should attach ourselves to in the night. Whoa, I just said something. The th Joseph of Arimathea came at night and attached himself to the body of Christ when it looked its worst. When it had the least to offer him personally, that's when he came running like a hero and he said, I'll defend this place. I'm not going to let the animals and the predators have this body. I I'll fight. I'll fight for I love this body. I'm begging for this body. Please give me that body. I'll make a donation to your campaign, pilot, but you need to give me that body. And he gave it to him. He loved the body of Christ. The heroes are the ones who refuse to defect, who refuse to quit during the downtime. Notice the body of Christ had a downtime. Every church has a downtime. Every ministry has a downtime. Every person goes through a downtime. Every believer has downtimes. And it's the body of Christ. It's the heroes who come running to us, not when we're on top of the world, but when all hell has, we've been crucified, been through. I'm so tired of the church just loving people when they're heroes and when they're successful and when they're doing all kinds of stuff. We need to love the people who, 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 who have hit rock bottom. We need to love the people and attach ourselves to the people in their downtime. When they have a relapse, when they mess up, that's no time to turn our backs on the body. We're the, we need to be heroes in their night and say, come on now, you got to get up. I can't let you. I know it's bad. I know you're going through something, but you're not alone. I love you. That's who we are. Every church, every believer, every ministry experiences downtimes, just like Jesus had a downtime. Who will be the hero in the night? Lord, I want to be a hero in people's night. I want to be the person who runs, not just to people when they're on top of the world. Everybody likes a winner. But I tell you, I believe God likes people who've hit rock bottom and they don't have anybody. That's when you find out who really loves you. That's where the real heroes step forward and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, you, can't, you, you, say, you said enough about them. I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to defend the body of Christ, it might, it might be marred, it might be bloody, it might look bad right now, but they're still in the body. They're struggling with an addiction, they're going through a rough time, but come on, let's circle them, let's, wrap, let's be heroes in the night and say you can't have what's left hell because God's going to bring a resurrection and a comeback in that person's life and I won't give up on them. Everybody take a praise break if you know. That God is the God in the down times like he is in the up times. Those same thousands and thousands of people that were there in the up times. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's here and he's walking through our streets. Oh, they're there. But when he's in a down time, none of them except the businessman. He said, I don't need the spotlight. I don't need the attention. But boy, I love the body of Christ so much. I don't care how bad it looks. I will not let hell have it. That's when you become a hero. When others walk away. You don't learn how to be a friend. Don't just love people when they're winning. Don't just call people when they're on top of the world. But you need to love people when they 
when they're in their downtime. That's what you never forget that phone call in your downtime. You never forget that day that that person had you on their heart and they nailed you with a word from God and put it in. You never forget that. And it's not about you. It's about showing the love of Jesus because that's who the body of Christ is. We're called to lift up the hands of the weary. You understand that the body was defenseless? Do you understand that predators would have ripped that body apart? Jackals and hyenas and wild animals and buzzards. They would have ripped that body to pieces. I know that it's not powerful, Joseph of Arimathea said. I know it's not performing miracles like it used to. I know it's not on top of the world like he used to be. I know that people aren't talking good about him anymore. But I'm going to defend the body of Christ right now because I believe there will come a comeback and there will come a resurrection. And now I shall preach. This is a time, ladies and gentlemen, for us to defend the church, defend the body of Christ. Don't let anybody talk bad about the kingdom. There's so much we, we're made fun of as Christians. We're made fun of because of the gospel that we preach. Now we're facing cancel culture. If you get up and preach from Genesis 19 or Romans chapter 1, if you get up and you declare out of Genesis that God made the male and female and the only marriage recognized in heaven is one between a man and a woman, then suddenly you're a bigot. Suddenly you are this and that. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I'm just preaching the truth of God's word. I'm preaching the truth that little babies are gifts from God. They have eternal destiny. And it's not a blob of flesh. It is a life that for whom Christ died. And he has a purpose for them. And we must stand and declare life is beautiful and life is precious. But we're the awful, awful people. The body of, no, we're not. We're not awful people. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are the called and chosen for such a time as this. And it's time to defend the body of Christ. It's time to protect the church. Don't let people run your church down. Don't let people run your Bible down. Don't let people run your faith down. Don't let them tell you that any old road is better than what you have taken. No, it's not. Jesus has changed our lives. He has washed our sins. And we need to stand and defend the body of Christ. My heart breaks for anybody hurting so I'm not up here throwing stones at transgender or anyone in a lifestyle, whether it's adultery, which is just the same, it's just the different, or fornication. I, there's nothing in me. I would defend, I would fight you physically if I had to. If I saw someone bullying anybody, speaking ill, humiliating, attacking anyone, we believe in the freedom to live any way you want to live. That's the beauty of our nation. But we do believe, too, in our freedom to boldly proclaim what this book teaches to our children and our children's children and hold up the Word of God as the standard and we're not evil because of that. Don't you let anybody put you down. The church, the body of Christ. I love it, don't you? Who can say with a heart of conviction, I love my church. Stand to your feet all over the room. Lord, in the name of Jesus, 
we stand together as the body of Christ. Unite us like never before. Give us a love for the church like never before. God, touch the young, touch the old, touch the middle to aged. Lord, give us a passion for the things of God. Make us heroes in the night. Help us to run to people when they're down, in their downtime. Help us to be that friend that loves at all times. Help us, God. God to surround and to care. Thank you that we can be faithful, not just when miracles are happening and when it's exciting, but we can be faithful in the night. We can be involved and engaged and begging for the body of Christ in the nighttime, Lord. That's when you go through and you notice who's standing. It's when it's dark. And we thank you for that determination. Let it get in our spirits in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So with every head bowed, and I want true Christians praying, feel the burden of this moment, because I sense a mighty harvest. I'm lost without God. I need a Savior. I need to engage with the Lord Jesus Christ. I need a change in my life. Life is, life is dark, but I, it's not too late. I want to get in. I want forgiveness. I want to be a part of the resurrection. I want to be a part. Pray for me. If that's you, boldly raise your hand right where you're standing. I want to see it all over this room. Yes, 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 yes. Amazing. Keep it high and unashamed. Oh, thank you, Lord. I love to see this. Praise God. Anybody else? Lift your hand high. Lift your hand high. This is fantastic. In the overflow, in any of our campuses, wherever you are there. Everybody, just right now, pray this prayer out loud with me. Would you say it? Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. I invite you into my heart, into my life. I receive you. Your blood cleanses me from all sin. Satan, get out of my home. Get out of my family. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my future. Get out of my past. You are defeated. You are canceled. Your assignment is canceled. The blood of Jesus sets me free from every bondage, from every fear, from every defeat. Say it. I am free in Jesus Christ. I am forgiven in Jesus Christ. And you're an overcomer by the blood of your lamb and what you're just saying right now. The words of your testimony. Everybody clap your hands and thank God for souls that have been saved. I'm so thankful that you joined us on this program in our closing moments together. Again, I want to wish you from my family, from Sharice, my wife, and all of our family, a wonderful, wonderful Easter and resurrection uh, celebration in your household and in your life. You know, when I think about the goodness of God and the family of God and what just happened when you prayed that prayer of salvation, if you prayed it, the book of John says to all who believed in him and accepted and received him, he gave them the power to become the sons and daughters of God. You are now a child of God. What a miracle. There's a real resurrection that is taking place in your life. It's already begun. The stone has been rolled away. You're coming out of that grave. And we want to help you in this new relationship with God. And you can go over to our website. You can click on the Salvation tab. And our team has prepared a free kit designed to specifically help you in your new walk with Jesus Christ. It's going to encourage you every day. It's going to be a blessing to you. In our closing moments, I want to tell you about how you can still be a hero in the body of Christ, specifically to fulfill Bible prophecy in the Holy Land. The prophet Isaiah spoke and he said, I want you to comfort my people, the nation of Israel. And we've been doing that for many years now. We're helping right now as I speak, construct a new fortified shelter in the Eshkol region of Israel. These families face so much terror, not only from these rockets, but terrorists from the Gaza Strip dig underground tunnels and they pop up in the neighborhoods. And it's just nothing but many times kidnapping and and even killings that take place in the middle of the night. 
I've been in one of these tunnels, and I can tell you it was a frightening thing, to say the least, to know that this would, could be in your community where you live with your family. Will you help me bring comfort to this community today? We ask this community, what is your number one need? And the number one need in many of these communities, they told us, is fortified shelters where we can run to in the times of crisis. But this will also serve as a community center for Jewish families and elderly Holocaust survivors and a place for the people to receive much needed counseling services. We do three things with the money you give. First and foremost, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to over 200 nations in the world through our television broadcast, Kingdom Connection. Then we produce inspirational resources that disciple people all over the world. And lastly, we go above and beyond in support by giving to these kinds of life-giving projects around the world and in our backyard and especially in the nation of Israel. Thank you for giving your best and God bless you. We'll see you next time on Kingdom Connection. This southern border of Israel is under constant attack from their neighbors on the Gaza Strip. From a barrage of rockets to incendiary fire balloons to terrorist tunnels popping up to kidnap innocent women and children in the middle of the night. Post-traumatic stress disorder is rampant in this community, especially among children. The locals referred to their way of life as 99% heaven and 1% hell. That prescribed 1% leads to upwards of 97% of the children suffering from PTSD. But there's hope. You can bring comfort to these people by partnering with us today. We are in the process of building another bomb shelter in the Eshko region of Israel. This is the community's number one priority to help ease their constant worries of terrorism and rocket attacks. When you partner with us today with a generous gift of $1,000 or more this month, we'll send you the Acres of Diamonds collection, including a commemorative coin made from soil from Jerusalem. We'll also plant a tree in your honor in Israel in a living growing memorial of your love for the Jewish people. With your gift of $500 or more, we want to send you the Acres of Diamonds gift set, including Jensen Franklin's three-part Acres of Diamonds video series on DVD. With your gift of $50 or more this month, we want to bless you with the Acres of Diamonds bundle with a beautiful art print reminding you to be still. Thank you for fulfilling biblical prophecy today by providing comfort to God's people living in the war zone of Eshkol, Israel. Call now or go online today. Sharice and I want to invite you to join us on the Holy Land Tour in 2021, December the 1st through the 10th. I'll be teaching from the sites and be filming some special programs that you'll get to be a part of. You'll get an amazing tour that will change your perspective and show you the Bible like you've never seen before. I'm excited about Israel, the Holy Land. Pray about if you should go. It's going to be an amazing trip. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.